Hello, everybody. My name is Wesley Wright, and today I'm going to be presenting about white saviorism. So what is white saviorism? Nigerian American writer Teju Cole produced the term white saviorial industrial complex in a series of tweets after the Kony 2012 video was released by the organization Invisible Children. He then published a piece in the Atlantic titled The White Savior Industrial Complex. In his tweets, he writes, the white savior supports brutal policies in the morning, founds charities in the afternoon, and receives awards in the evening. And the white savior industrial complex is not about justice. It is about having a big emotional experience that validates privilege. privilege. His tweets are included in the Atlantic article, and I would recommend that you watch the Kony 2012 video and other videos about it for more context. Essentially, what he's saying is white saviorism is when privileged people, mostly white, head to developing countries and communities to help people. While it may seem altruistic, it paints the people of the community they're going to as helpless and childish, while the white people are presented as the heroes. So one of the earliest examples in writing of how white saviorism was presented was from a poet called Rudyard Kipling in 1899 and his poem titled The White Man's Burden. And it goes, and it was written uh, after the Americans won the Spanish-American War and they were occupying the Philippines. So he writes, take up the white man's burden, send forth the best ye breed, go bind your sons to exile to serve your captives need. To wait in heavy harness on fluttered folk and wild, your new caught sullen peoples, half devil and half child. So he's basically presenting the people of the Philippines as half devil and half child, and it's the responsibility of the United States and white people to lift them up, and it's such a burden. So this relates to social justice and social change because it doesn't give credit to the community members who are doing and living the hard work every day and it gives it to white outsiders to, and it basically gives it to white outsiders, um, the hard work of uplifting the community, excuse me. And it also contributes to white supremacy because it contributes to the mindset that white people are inherently more qualified to deal with issues rather than the community members themselves. So what does it look like in international education and beyond? So white saviorism can, take many forms that can happen everywhere, everywhere in the world, including the US. So one of the biggest examples that I found um, through academic sources was service learning opportunities and programs through universities. And in Mitchell et al, they write, service learning is being implemented mostly by white faculty with mostly white students at predominantly white institutions to serve mostly poor individuals and mostly people of color. And some examples of this would be taking a spring break to go on a mission trip to an underserved community to build houses or tutor students or, you know, give out food or something of that nature where students and faculty are going to a community and they believe that they're the heroes and they're doing this good work and that the people there can't help themselves. And then, uh, and another example is no excuses charter schools in New Orleans. And in uh, this academic source, they describe a hiring practices of no excuse charter schools, which basically means no excuse. They mean uh, there's no excuse for students who are living in poverty not to achieve greatness and good academics. And it explains how the hiring practices at these schools, they're not hiring people from within the communities, they're hiring white people who have never been in this community and to teach students of color and students in more urban areas and uh, the results have not turned out well. And then finally, um, characters in pop culture. So while this isn't directly related to international education, I thought it would be uh, interesting and helpful to provide how uh, white saviorism is presented in movies. So in these hyperlinks, I have the green book, the help and the blind side. And I encourage you to watch them and kind of watch them with the eye of thinking about white saviorism. So what is being done about it? Uh, I'm going to talk about the organization No White Saviors and I'm going to go to their website. So just a moment. 
So this is No White Savior's website. If you're not uncomfortable, if you're not listening. So they say, we never said no white people. We just know you shouldn't be the hero of the story. So first I'm gonna to go to their purpose. So, oh, pardon me, purpose. So we are dedicated to disrupting traditional power structures between the Western world and the African continent. We strive to disrupt the white savior complex in international development and aid missions by identifying the white savior complex when it is perpetuated on social media or on the ground, holding those with structural power and privilege accountable by for harms through legal and social means, inviting deeper learning through critical feedback and personal self-reflection, catalyzing wider conversations that challenge dominant narratives. They amplify the voices of those who are transforming the communities by uh, using our platforms to highlight Black, Indigenous, and people of color, BIPOC, who enact social change in their communities, especially post-colonial and overexploited settings, and these other factors as well. And I also forgot to mention that, so they are a No, no White Saviors is an advocacy campaign led by a majority female, majority African team of professionals based in Kampala, Uganda. Our collective, our collective experience in the developmental Development and aid sectors has led us to a deep commitment to seeing things change in a more equitable and anti-racist direction. So they do this through advocacy. So they actually take on legal cases against people who have caused harm um, in Uganda and across the African continent. And these are specific um, cases that they're currently um, working on, including sex trafficking, violations in healthcare and human trafficking. They also focus on education. So they do an annual summer series. They do speaking engagements and consulting for universities and other organizations. They have online platforms, which is most predominantly their Instagram follow, their Instagram account, which has over 300,000 followers, 200,000 followers, sorry. And through action, they uh, highlight other organizations that in Uganda that are um, doing the great work of trying to uplift their communities. So um, they say, while we spend much of our time holding accountable those who are getting it wrong, we find it equally as important to show examples and support those who are getting it right. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Pardon me, having issues. So, so what would international education programs look like if no white savior's goals are achieved? So it'd be credit is given to local organizers and organizations who are doing the work on the ground in their own communities. Students and participants from the global north travel with a sense of humility and awareness of what privileges and knowledge they are bringing to the program. They realize that they need to work with community members. Student and faculty ultimately travel with the goal of learning rather than helping. And participants are aware of the dangers and complexities of documenting experience on social media. So for example, taking, asking somebody, can I take your picture beforehand, bef uh, before taking a picture and posting it on social media and not taking pictures of people who cannot consent like children. So how can we move forward as international educators? So advocate for programs that focus on studying superior elements of a country. An example in this article is um, Cuba and Costa Rica. So having students go to Cuba and Costa Rica because they have a high rank in environmental sustainability efforts and focusing on those positive things is very important to, to frame it differently. Implement the study of critical theories such as critical race theory into orientations and curriculums and programs because travel itself does not inherently make you a more open person. You need to have that critical thought and thinking about how your actions are affecting people. Seek out scholars and organizations like No White Saviors to speak to students and faculty about white saviorism and problematic behaviors abroad and have clear expectations and ethical guidelines for what is posted on social media when in communities. Uh, like I mentioned before, not taking pictures of children, um, not taking pictures of people who cannot consent. So these are my academic sources. Um, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to your comments.